we have to recognize that we are part of the planet. Lots of people in, in society, and especially in urban areas, has really believed that we, we don't need the Earth, that we could substitute it with new technologies and other issues. Well, there's clearly a very dramatic shift on the understanding of the global challenges we're facing. Just over the past five, ten years, humanity is now the, the major driving force behind planetary change. And this means that we must do nothing less than basically redefine what we mean with development and what we mean with sustainable development. The reality is that very little science is truly approaching sustainability from a social ecological perspective. So that's one of our starting points in everything we're approaching in, in, in this research we're doing. Resilience basically means the capacity to deal with change and not predicted change but often unexpected and sudden or abrupt change. Previously we have taken the resilience as given on the planet. All the ways we've been managing fisheries, agriculture and other ecosystems have just taken the resilience for granted. That, that sort of phase, that era, is, is sort of not here anymore. Well, the startup of the Stockholm Resilience Center really starts in its most recent developments with the major release in 2005 of the first ever global health control of the world's ecosystems, the UN Millennium Ecosystem Assessment, which showed two very alarming red flags. The first one is that humanity is in a, in a pace which we've never seen before degrading ecosystem services. And the second red flag was really that this is now having global implications, that the deterioration of ecosystem services is not anymore an isolated issue, it's really implicating global sustainability. So uh, the initiative sort of developed partly inspired by that assessment, but also uh, due to a long uh, collaboration between different research groups that had tried to link uh, social and ecological systems. So the Resilience Center will advance theory and policy tools, methods for governance in the areas of resilience, vulnerability, adaptability, sustainability, so the more cross-cutting themes in science. We will house within the center the whole broad area of, of disciplines, all the way from historians, anthropologists, economists, ecologists, water resource people, all the way to more political sciences, ecology, from a political science sense. And so, so it's a broad, truly interdisciplinary endeavor. We have a lot of focus on urban areas. About 50% of the human population live in urban areas. And there is a tendency in urban areas to forget about your link to the biosphere, because you don't see it on a daily basis. So we're looking at the dependence on urban areas of the broader biosphere, how much we need from the broader ecosystems for our own existence. Other areas of, of critical research is in the coastal zone. We know that global fisheries are facing um, you know, a virtual certain doom if we don't change fishery policy very, very significantly, and that the coastal areas are the ones generally most subject to social ecological pressures. Well, one of the um, major areas where we've been uh, collaborating is in the, in the Great Barrier Reef in, in Australia, where the deterioration of the coral quality and then the fish species in, in the whole Barrier Reef came to a point where the Australian government was very receptive to new thinking, and, and resilience uh, thinking has truly contributed to the new policies of maintaining very significant and much larger protected areas of the coastal zone than previously was thought of. What we would like to address here at the Stockholm Resilience Center is, uh, is the strengthening the capacity of human societies and economies to deal with these changes. So we won't go into very bad human behavior, so we won't go into dead ends, but, but can use these crises and, and find pathways out of them. These are the really profound issues for the future of humanity. And, and what we hope to is to at least contribute to some extent to solutions and insights for how to deal with these challenges.
And so when I look back at the Stockholm Resilience Center in 15 years time, I, the vision I, I have for the center is truly that we've been as one partner among many partners around the world and, and the Resilience Center is um, a node for global collaborative work is that we've been able to contribute across scales but particularly perhaps at the global environmental governance scale to an understanding that humanity and in all the countries of the world in a way that we haven't seen yet need to collaborate in very tangible and concrete terms on how we govern and manage the global commons and that this is not something we can do on the margin this has to be as central as when we talk about global security or global human welfare and human rights issues because we are truly in the Anthropocene and, and resilience theory, if anything, shows that we have to be even more careful with the precious resources we have on the planet.